The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Pete Roberts, and I work in the marketing team here in Altair, UK. So hopefully you can hear me um, and loud and clear coming through, uh, coming through the mic. Uh, any problems, let us know. Uh, there's a chat box on the right of your screen where you can uh, get in contact with us. So today's webinar from CAD to complex assembly analysis in minutes. So just before we kick off, just a couple of housekeeping things. So as I say, hopefully you can hear me okay today, uh, but we can't hear you unfortunately on the call. So um, if you unmute your microphones, we, we won't be able to hear you, but we do want you to get in touch. We do want to make this an interactive session today. Uh, and you can do that by answering, uh, by asking questions, sorry, in the, uh, in the questions panel, which should be on the right hand side of your screen. And at any point during the webinar today, you can type a question in there. It'll pop up on our screens here. And we've got a session right at the end of the, uh, the talk today where we're going to go through as many of those as possible. Uh, so any questions, do please write them in there. Um, so uh, OK, so your presenters today uh, are Bajesh Mamie, Sales Director at Altair, and Martin Haynes, uh, who is an application here in applications engineer here in uh, Altair UK support team. And if we look at the agenda, what the guys are going to be talking about, uh, we're going to kick things off with an audience poll in a minute um, to get your feedback, uh, understand some of your pain points, so we can make sure that this presentation is uh, aligned to to what you guys uh, want to hear. Um, Bal's going to kick things off with a bit of an introduction to Hyperworks and to SimLab. Another quick poll, then we hand over to Martin, who's going to give uh, a live demo of SimLab, um, where he's going to show some of the functionality uh, live, uh, live on his machine. Then we're going to give a quick uh, case study, which is the motorcycle uh, division of BMW, who have been using SimLab for some time and are getting some great results by, by using it. Uh, finally, we're going to have a, a, a last poll question after that, and then we'll get on to the Q&A session. OK, so a quick poll to kick things off with. Um, so what I will do is, uh, is launch this. And what should happen is you'll get a question pop up on your screens. So the question is, how much time do you or your team spend cleaning up geometry in the average week? So what you can do is click. It just allows you to, to select one of these. So options are one to four hours, four to eight hours, uh, one to two days, three to four days, or all uh, all week. So what we'll do is just just let people answer that question. Um, you know, give people a give people a chance, and then we can take a look at those results. Okay, all right. So it looks like it's pretty pretty even split actually um around about a third of the audience saying uh one to four hours a week uh, another third saying four to eight um another third roughly saying uh, one to two days and then a few a few people saying all week uh, so spending most of their time doing that so thanks everyone for uh for answering that one what i'll do now is close that and we'll be back to the slides and I'll hand over to Bal uh, to give the introduction. Thanks, Pete, and thanks for everyone attending. Um, so I just wanted to give give everyone a quick quick overview of, of where this solution uh, SimLab fits in into the, um, the the portfolio of technology. So I think most of all test customers would would be aware of the comprehensive portfolio of um, technology within the Hyperworks suite. And what we're going to focus on on today is is technology really right at the forefront of um, trying to increase productivity and throughput in terms of the the simulation um, area. The reason being is is the faster that we can try to do this um, meshing, model build, and the more time we can spend optimizing our our designs. So ultimately, it's it's all about trying to lead to a, a better a better product. Um, so let's just have a quick look at the design and modeling technology. So this this is the the solutions that are currently available, and um, HyperMesh um, being being the key key 
technology for a lot of our um, customers uh, around around the world in terms of model build uh, it's completely solver neutral and hyperview for post processing hyper crash for um, obviously crash analysis 2d 3d plotting in hypergraph motion view for model build and then simlab which is our feature based um high fidelity cae model build for complex complex analysis which which i think what we'll see today from martin's demo it's it's a it's a user interface that's been streamlined in terms of workflows and the the idea of the type of um, analysis that may be using it um, and trying to make it as easy as possible then finally on the right hand side we've got the virtual wind tunnel which is a pre-processing um, technology for cfd external aero let's head back into the um home page and just a very quick quick overview so if, if, if all our customers will be will be aware of the the, the value the the token system brings but this this was just to just to highlight that everyone that's already got access to to hyperworks technology can use sim simlab now um in terms of their model build process so everything that you'll see today you'll have access to anyone that's new to altair um the the way this this um, patented licensing system works is as soon as you get access to one technology so for example if you get access to to simlab here that you'll get access to all the technology below 21 tokens and um, that you can see on the screen and what we'll see later on today the added value that we bring in terms of this technology is the embedded solvers that further improve and enhance the workflow from from cad right through to optimization and, and trying to bring that loop back in terms of when the cad changes that you can automatically generate your CAE models. Um, that technology in terms of the solving capability is available at 30 tokens. So you can see the, um, the breadth of physics that you get. And this is the key enabler for SimLab because SimLab is our multi-physics preprocessor. And what we want to try to do is give, give users the capability to actually do multi-physics without having to invest in many, many solvers. So this is all available through the one one interface and um, it, it, it's an enabler for, for um, innovation, which we'll see later on. So just, just going back into um, the, the product itself. Um, so this, the SimLab, so SimLab's been part of the, the portfolio for, for many years and it's, it's been, it started off as a, as a preprocessor for um, tetrahedral meshing in the powertrain area. And since then, Altair have, enhanced it significantly in terms of its um, usability uh, and the automations and the solvers that you can currently work with. And it's really easy to use and the, the interface, the aim of the interface and the workflow is, is to get really as fully automated as possible. Um, and I think that's what we're going to try to get through today is showcasing the, the time saving that can be achieved. Just, just to illustrate, illustrate this, so the traditional process will start off as, as CAD. I'll get passed over to the CAE model build team. You do some analysis. You may find a problem. You do some optimization, and this optimization loop tends to tends to stay within the CAE team. Or if the CAD is changing, it may be changing. Um, obviously, at the start, then changing as it goes ahead. That there may be a break in terms of getting that CAD back into the analysis um, into the analysis team. With with SimLab, what what we try what we're trying to do is is trying to automate um, that, that loop. So what we'll see today is, is through spending a bit of time um, organizing your CAD effectively, you can streamline the workflow in terms of generating your models automatically. So once you've done it once, if there's any subtle changes to, to fillets, to um, hole sizes and so on, the automation can be reapplied to your model to automatically build the model, automatically run the analysis, and if need be, you can run an, uh, an optimization loop um, on that. The key thing here is, is that the model, as geometry changes, the model can be kept up to date. So you're always working on the, the latest um, CAD revision um, um, that you may be uh, working with. So the time, the time savings are, are significant and we have many examples of, of this. Um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hand over to, to Martin, who's gonna take you through some of the technology live and um, present the BMW case study. But just before that, <laughs> we've got, uh, we've got Sorry, uh, that's right, uh, a very quick poll question for you. 
uh, again, just to get a little bit of feedback of uh, from who's on the uh, on the call here and, and what some of your pain points are. So again, uh, questions should have popped up on your screen. What uh, what's your or your team's biggest pain point with the FE model build process? So is it the overall time spent pre-processing? Perhaps it's the wasted effort due to repeat CAD changes and needing to uh, you know, perform the, the FE modeling process again. Perhaps it's broken links between CAD and CAE, uh, or perhaps it's something else uh, that we haven't listed here. So again, uh, we'll, we'll give people a few moments here just to, to answer that question. Uh, we'll go through the answers, then we'll, we'll get on to uh, Martin's live demo. Okay, all right. So, yeah, it looks like around about 50% of the audience, almost 50% is saying uh, the biggest pain point is the over overall time spent pre-processing. Uh, about a third saying the wasted effort due to repeat CAD changes. And uh, the, the, the rest of the audience are, are selecting uh, the broken link between CAD and CAE with just a, a couple of percent saying something else. So, again, thanks very much for answering that. Uh, what I'll do now is, is close that question and you should now see uh, SimLab on Martin's screen. So Martin, uh, take it away. Perfect. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Bal. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope we're all excited to see, uh, see SimLab in action if we haven't before. Um, okay, so I'm going to start by importing some CAD. Um, so we can read direct from uh, many different uh, sorry, let me just navigate to this. So we can read uh, direct from the likes of Katia, uh, UGNX, Creo, that that sort of thing. Um, and the advantages to doing that is we can actually uh, read in any sort of design parameters uh, coming from those those CAD packages. Uh, in this case, I've just got a parasolid. Um, so it's a very very simple assembly. Um, so when you first bring any kind of CAD. Uh, into SimLab, the first thing you might want to do is, is mesh the model. So if I isolate this part here um, and then put uh, some kind of mesh on the model. So firstly, I might need to, to measure my part just to check roughly what size I'm looking at. Okay. So that's two mil. Uh, so let's go with three on average uh, and a minimum of 0.3. So SimLab actually uses uh, feature-based meshing, which Bao sort of alluded to earlier. Um, and what that means is we don't need to do any cleanup on the CAD originally. Uh, and we'll have a look uh, a bit later on some examples. Obviously, this one's quite simple. Uh, but it can basically ignore any, any feature edges which are close together uh, to ensure a good quality mesh. So here we've just put a, a generic mesh on the part straight away. Uh, and we can start to see some of the feature-based meshing of SimLab coming through. Uh, so, for example, the nice uh, matte triangular mesh here. Uh, but we can do better than that, a lot better than that in, uh, in SimLab. So if I bring the rest of the parts in, um, we've got quite a few different ways, and, and I'm hoping to give kind of an overview of, of how we might generate a high-quality mesh on this part. So one of them, uh, we can search for features within a model. So if I select that body and search for features, uh, I can pick out specific types of features. So circles, if I wanted to create a washer, um, cylinders, if I'm looking at bolt holes, that kind of thing. So in here, I've got uh, a few bolt holes I just want to pick out. Again, I can just uh, quickly measure that. So that's 3.9. Uh, so all cylinders on this part below a radius of four. And I want to make this a group called bolt holes. So when I click OK, uh, I'll then generate a group. Uh, and groups are kind of the fundamentals of how we can automate things in SimLab. Uh, and again, that will become, become clear as we move on. So at the moment, you can see it's picked up all of those cylinders because uh, they are all below a radius of four. Perfect. So that would be one way. Uh, another way, we can just apply mesh controls directly onto parts. Uh, and within SimLab, we've got a huge range of um, mesh controls available, some specific to certain features, um, some generic to any kind of bodies, and then we've got uh, quite a few advanced mesh controls as well uh, in terms of how many volume layers, preserving certain entities, and that kind of thing. So in this example, I'll just create a couple. 
So one might be this face. Um, so I might want to add a few more layers to this face in this case. Uh, so let's have five layers there. Another one, if I was to create a washer, uh, I can change to washer. And notice how when I pick any one of the edges, uh, it automatically selects all of the relevant edges. Uh, and that's partly down to Simlabs intelligent feature recognition. Uh, so you can see that currently I'm selecting full circles. I can do things like select edge loops, uh, free edge loops, that kind of thing. Similarly with faces, I can select uh, cylinders for, for bolt holes or fillets, that kind of thing. So I'll do that and make a, a washer control on here. Uh, let's have two layers in the washer, apply that. Uh, and we can see the outline of where our washer will be created. So it's, it's handy to see before we commit to the meshing what it will actually uh, look like. Lastly, let's create a bolt mesh control. Uh, and the good thing about groups uh, is that we can just use a group. So we don't have to pick the faces ourselves out of the model. We can uh, select straight from a group. Uh, and that has many advantages, uh, certainly for automation. Because our group names will always be consistent, uh, we can always consistently pick the correct group to apply the correct mesh control. And as we look at the BMW case study, that's, that's effectively what they've done there. I'll create this mesh control, uh, so you can see all of my mesh controls, and they are listed in a, in a panel as well. So now we've got uh, some examples. Let's put the rest through exactly the same mesh control as before, uh, so we can see the difference. <clears throat> now, as this is meshing, um, I just want to talk a bit about the feature-based uh, meshing again. So one of the key advantages of it is, well, firstly, you don't have to clean up the CAD that we've mentioned. Uh, but secondly, it's very good at creating efficient meshes. Uh, so by efficient, I mean, firstly, high quality, uh, secondly, robust, and most importantly, and often overlooked, is it doesn't throw more elements at a section uh, than it really needs. So we create these kind of mapped patterns, uh, which is in a very, very efficient way of uh, meshing that space. So you can see, even in places I haven't defined any mesh control, Simlabs automatically picked it up and applied a nice mapped mesh. If we look at the areas we have changed, so for example, we've got our washer here now. We've got the five layers. Uh, again, it's nicely mapped. And if we look into these holes, you can see the, the difference that's made. So that's the meshing. Just put it back uh, into one body. So when you come to assemble a model or, or make any kind of changes, um, you might have to do certain actions. So one of them would be moving parts. Uh, we can actually do transformations. So we can align faces to particular faces, uh, for example, uh, kind of like a mating operation in CAD. Um, we can do all sorts of transformations as well. Uh, but in this case, let's just do some, some generic moves on this part. So if I translate it downwards, uh, and then I can translate it uh, across as well. I've got the nice part moved. Um, and again, say say the uh, CAD design has made some kind of change in terms of where these, these bolt holes are located. Obviously, we've made a transformation, so now they're not aligned. Uh, but within SimLab, we can do uh, morphing functions to the mesh itself. So if I pick uh, these faces, and then uh, using SimLab, I can select the adjacent to pick up all of those faces attached to the ones I selected. So you can see it's picked up all of the bolt holes and the washer. Uh, and then in this case, I'm just going to translate it in the X direction uh, by minus three. But we can also do things like change radius. So we can actually change the bolt hole size itself um, or change thickness. So these rib sections, for example, change, change the thickness there. Um, so that's finished, and we can see that the, the bolt holes have moved nicely now. So they're back to being aligned uh, how they were before. Cool. So once we've got our, our model set up, there's various different ways we might want to connect it. Um, one of them, we could use a weld. Uh, so if I go into the weld tool in SimLab, uh, we can create various kind of welds based on templates. Uh, and the nice thing with SimLab as well is we have this sort of uh, template layout on the right. Uh, so we always know 
uh, what we're selecting and what it does. So leg length, for example, is this distance here. So it's very nice and self-explanatory. So if I just pick the guide edge I want to weld, uh, the face connected to that, which I can see from the diagram, and this face down here. And in this case, we're just going to make a five mil both ways with a three element layer. So when I press OK, that will generate nice and quickly. And you can see I've now got this weld uh, body, so a solid hex weld in here. Now you may notice it's not actually uh, connected at this point. It's just generated the, the physical representation. Uh, but in SimLab, it's not, it's not difficult to uh, connect these up. So if I hide these outer faces, uh, we have a very nice function uh, in the assembly for face on face. So what I can do is I can pick uh, a target face and then the face I want to imprint, so the new newly meshed part, uh, and I can just equivalence the nodes. So I press apply, and we can see straight away we've got the nice uh, mapped uh, shared faces there. Uh, so similar, I can do it down here. Uh, apply again, and again we get the nice uh, shared nodes on those faces now. So that's nice and connected up, nice and quickly. Uh, bring everything back. Uh, so a weld might be be one method, um, and certainly once we've we've done that joining, we may want to consider remeshing. So I guess one of the key advantages of of SimLab is everything's designed to be done on the mesh, um, which means you don't need to do any geometry cleanup. Uh, and what it also means is when we make any any kind of design changes, um, the CAD guys have maybe updated something. Uh, it's usually really quick to implement because we can just alter the mesh we already have um, to suit the new needs. And once we've done any kind of large changes, such as adding a weld, uh, we can just remesh the, the surrounding faces. And again, it goes back to being a nice, a nice consistent mapped mesh. So that's the weld. Um, let's look at some other functionality you might need. So uh, within assembly, again, we have a function called align. Uh, and this is very good for aligning, for example, contact faces to make sure they're flat, to make sure they're connecting the correct areas. Uh, we've got similar things for cylinders, aligning bolt holes, um, and various other controls as well. So if I just pick these faces, for example, uh, and say I want them actually to be aligned to this face now uh, instead of down here. I can do that. I can press apply, and you can see it's nice and aligned now with that face. Now I can merge these two faces back together, uh, just with a click of a button. Uh, so now I've just got one nice fesh face. Uh, again, as before, I probably want to consider remeshing uh, these sections just to account for that updated uh, change there. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, so weld might be one way of connecting the part. Uh, the other way might be through bolts. Um, so again, we have a bolt modeling tool within SimLab. Uh, we can actually create solid bolts based on any kinds of patterns. Uh, and we can uh, set up patterns for custom uh, bolts as well for, for you guys. Um, and again, this can feed into uh, automation processes as well, creating those bolts in the correct location. In this case, I'm just going to create some 1D bolts uh, on these two bolt holes here. So in this case, I'm going to create a, a pretension bolt. Um, so what I need in this case is uh, some face-based uh, bolts. We've got various different templates uh, depending on what type of bolt you're looking to create. Uh, but in this case, I just want to get the top RB um, and the bottom RB here, and then I can create a pretension section between. So let's uh, select our bolt same face here. Uh, we could pick in here, but in this case, let's just use the, the washer. Enter our diameter, click apply, and we've created a nice bolt head. Uh, similarly, I can do that over here, uh, and we can create it on the base as well. Uh, 
Perfect. So we created our bolt head. Uh, for now, we'll leave it at that, but in a minute, we'll come to creating a pre tension section uh, between them. So once we're happy with our, our overall model, um, we might want to consider volume mesh in this now. Uh, so a very useful mesh control we have in SimLab uh, is volume layers. And this makes sure that we keep a consistent number of uh, Tetra elements through the thickness uh, to make sure we meet our, our meshing standards and ensure we get a robust answer. So if I just apply that uh, and then volume mesh these parts. Nice and safe. Okay, so um, one of the key advantages with, with SimLab when it comes to volume meshing as well uh, is SimLab will automatically try to optimize the solid mesh it generates. Uh, so it won't just fill the volume, you can give it specific quality criteria. Uh, if we were to do a, a second order mesh, for example, we can start to look at uh, the Jacobian quality as well. Uh, and this is really important because we want to ensure that we get a robust mesh the first time. We don't want to have to spend time uh, cleaning up elements uh, and looking through all the defects. Uh, of course, we can do that in SimLab, but the, the advantage of using the mesh controls, using these qualities, that we can avoid that altogether. <clears throat> uh, we can also do uh, automatic quality cleanup uh, once this is finished. Um, and there we can look again at different types of uh, quality criteria. Uh, so some specific to various different solvers uh, and depending on your objectives of the analysis as well. Uh, there are many other things we could have done with the bolts as well, for example. Uh, so we can do a, a template based approach. So we can just import uh, bolt templates and automatically assign them to areas. Uh, and that's something we'll, we'll possibly look at later. Just wait for this to finish meshing. Nice. So uh, we can see now all of the, our solid uh, bodies on the left. Uh, and we can take a section cut and uh, have a look at that as well. So you can see through all of the different layers, we've got at least a minimum of that two, two thickness that we specified, uh, and that should ensure we get a good quality answer out of the end. Okay, so now we've got everything volume meshed, uh, we can start to set this up for analysis. Uh, so in SimLab, we've got a solutions panel. Uh, so we can right click and we can create a solution. Uh, and we can select our bodies. So in this case, I'll be looking at a linear static. Um, but we've got a whole range of uh, structural, vibration, uh, fluid, all sorts. Uh, so our solver, OptiStruct, is our, our structural implicit solver. So with that, we've got linear, nonlinear. We can do heat transfer, uh, frequency-based analysis, uh, even generation of super elements, coupled uh, thermal structure, that kind of stuff. Uh, but we're also supporting our other solvers. So for example, Flux for electrical, um, AccuSolve for our uh, CFD purposes as well. So I'll just create this solution. Uh, SimLab automatically filters all of our loads and constraints. So we're just working with the relevant ones. Uh, so in this case, let's uh, put something together. So we could constrain, for example, the space face. Uh, we could use enforced displacements as well. Uh, and then let's generate some loading on uh, this face in minus x. Let's have it at minus 1. Uh, similarly, we can do things like pressures, uh, temperatures, and all of that as well. So let's uh, leave that there. Um, going back to our bolt then, we can add our, our bolt pretension section. Uh, so if we go to connect, and find our bolts that we created earlier. Uh, we should be able to connect this up nicely. So pretension of one out of ten, uh, like this. We should generate a nice uh, pretension section there. Similarly, again for our, our second uh, connection. Click OK. Uh, Marmoly. Perfect. 
So we've got our two pretension sections now, uh, both of these bar bodies here. Uh, just re-add them to our solution. So perfect. Uh, and you can see that the pretension is coming here as well. So we've got our two two pretension loads. Uh, the other thing we might want to do is, is contacts. Um, so we can do automatic contact creation uh, based on a, a given search tolerance. Uh, so in this case, I'll just automatically connect up all our parts, like so. Uh, so everything's nice and connected. <laughs> uh, the last thing we might want to do is look at what sort of outputs we're interested in. Um, so whether we're interested in uh, 1D forces, stresses, strains, nodal displacement, all of that can be uh, output as well. Uh, so with all of that uh, set up, uh, the last thing we might want to look at is the properties and materials. So if I come to properties and materials page, uh, when it comes to materials, we can model all sorts within SimLab. So we've got our isotropic, we've got orthotropic uh, engineering constants as well. We can look at metals, rubbers, gaskets uh, as well. Uh, so if we take this typical uh, metal, this will do for now. Uh, we can add plastic material information. We can add thermal fatigue properties as well. Uh, so let's just leave steel as is. Uh, let's create a property then uh, for all our solid sections. Uh, so looking at solid, and we want to use that steel. And I can just pick the bodies in here, or pick them in here. And OK, perfect. Uh, and then if we update this, uh, we'll run our solution uh, in the background. <coughs> perfect. Uh, so yeah, as I mentioned, um, we can create various different solutions and we can link these all together as well. Um, and we can do some uh, very advanced solution types within SimLab as well. So we can do, for example, nonlinear. Uh, then you can do like continuation loading. So you can have uh, things like push fits, that kind of uh, snap fits, that kind of simulation can be done. Uh, we also have our explicit solver in here, Radios. Um, we can quickly set up drop tests on, on bodies so we can give it a specific height, uh, what gravity we're using, uh, specify the drop direction, and that will automatically create uh, the contacts, the drop load, uh, and all of that within our model. Uh, we can also create, as I mentioned, AccuSolve, so we can do a, a fluid analysis, and then we can actually map the results uh, onto a structure analysis, and we do have a, an example video of that uh, later on. So our model's finished running. Um, obviously, we've got a low load, so we've got uh, low stresses, uh, but we can change change our contour plot as well. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to pick out uh, areas of, of high importance, I can lower this, um, and then anything gray is significantly over that. So if I wanted to look at regions that were in plastic uh, stress, for example, I could do it that way nice and easily. I can just reset it like so. Uh, we have our drop down up here so we can look at different uh, results that we've requested and we can average them differently as well. Uh, we can do various different post processing options, things like hotspots. Uh, so we can look at anything above three uh, on our bodies, for example. Uh, we can capture an image, generate the, the hotspots as well. So you can see, obviously, anywhere that's connected to this weld is, is highly stressed as we'd expect. Uh, SimLab has a lot of advanced features for powertrain, which uh, if you're an existing customer, I'm sure you're, you're aware. Things like uh, modeling bore distortion, modeling the, the valves, um, plotting those results as well can be done. Uh, we've also got handy tools for strain, ga strain gauges uh, and plotting of stress gradients as well. Uh, but the last thing I just want to touch on this demonstration is that once we have a solution, we can very easily turn this into an optimization or into a design study um, and it's just a matter of right clicking uh, and going to optimize in this case i'll just go through the process of setting it up uh, just so you can see how, how slick it is so if i do a free shape for example 
Um, and then if I was to come to my optimization panel, uh, it's all broken down in, in four stages, basically. So in the design space, I can pick a, a face uh, to, to optimize. So if I wanted to optimize this ribs uh, profile, for example, I could do it like so. Uh, I could then constrain this uh, design space relatively easily. So one might be uh, to ensure we've got, got symmetry. Obviously, we don't want it uh, being different on one half to the other half. Uh, it's going to be a consistent rib. Uh, we can also constrain the direction that shape can move. Uh, so, for example, uh, I may want it only to move normal to that, that surface. So in and out, I don't want it to move side to side or completely change the the ribs profile. Uh, I can also constrain the connected region as well, just to make sure that the nodes connected there don't move. We don't want it to affect any other parts in the model. Uh, I can apply that. Then I can pick out a huge range of responses, um, anything from things like mass, uh, moments of inertia, volumes. Um, we can look at stresses, uh, a huge range of frequencies as well gasket presses that kind of thing so it's it's very a uh, very large amount of results we can plot so we could for example take our stresses here uh, we could then put a constraint on the stress so maybe it can't exceed uh, a certain value uh, then all we need to do is is create the objective uh, that we want to optimize so it, if we wanted to create for example mass uh, then we could minimize that mass uh, and then we can run from there which will probably take a bit longer than the webinar uh, so we'll leave leave that there but that shows you that how easy everything is uh, within SimLab to quickly create these models <clears throat> perfect so i've got uh, another model up that i just want to show uh, some of the more advanced or cleanup features we have available uh, and some of the other techniques possible. So in here we've got a, a pre-meshed model. Um, so we've got various ways of cleaning up. So for example, if I was to use the details uh, panel, uh, I could use this to quickly remove a logo. So if we've got this logo, I can pick the adjacent faces uh, and then what is not touching those faces. If I go here, uh, it automatically identifies all of those logo faces then and gives me the option of whether I want to remove them. Uh, and I can just press yes. Uh, and it will clean up all of those sections. Uh, and as I mentioned, once we've done these processes, we can always do a local remesh just to improve that quality again. Uh, and that works for, for more than just logos. So any kind of defeaturing you want to do, in this case, if we wanted to remove this section, uh, in a very similar way, we can do that as well. Uh, so it's very powerful mesh uh, cleanup tools. Likewise, we've got things for fillet defeaturing, chamfer defeaturing, uh, hole removal, and that, that sort of stuff as well. So the last thing I want to touch on is uh, how we might use bolt templates. So I'm sure a lot of your, your products probably have quite a few bolts, particularly if you're, you're modeling solid components. Um, and I kind of touched on it earlier, but we can create templates very quickly. And these can be imported and exported as well. Uh, so let's change this to uh, a generic uh, bolt uh, and then create this. Uh, and then if I create a thread now for the other section uh, as a template as well, uh, create this. So now in here, I've got two automation objects, uh, the head and the thread, which is basically the instructions I've just created. Uh, then I create some instructions on how they're connected. Uh, in this case, I'll just use the equivalents. Uh, again, create a template for this. So now I've got all my templates. Uh, I can use the automatic bolt creation tool uh, and select my templates so my head thread uh, and my connect uh, and then just what bodies are these should be applied to so this as my head section and this is where my thread should go uh, and then I can just apply this and very quickly we've made uh, consistent bolts for all of those sections 
Uh, and of course, we can use any kind of template uh, that's that's required uh, in there nicely. So I hope that gives you a, a brief overview of SimLab then. Um, just to touch on a, an example video. Um, so this one is all about the multi-physics um, mapping within SimLab and how we can use uh, a parametric DOV as well. So in here we've got our fluid components, our structural components. Um, we've already generated a CFD solution. So much like I just generated the structural one, we can do it for CFD. Uh, we can run that as well and create results. Then we can set up a structural solution uh, and then we can actually map the results uh, from our CFD run straight onto our structural run. So in this case, we can map the pressure across nicely. Uh, similarly, how we run everything, we can update that uh, and then we can generate, generate results from that. Uh, but the very nice thing about SimLab is we can import uh, parameters from uh, the CAD package itself. So here you can see things like the rib count, uh, the rib dimensions themselves, uh, including the wall thickness as well. Uh, and then we can run a DOV on these uh, and give it a min max uh, change. And when we run this, SimLab will be accessing the CAD. It will be passing the updated geometry to the CAD package, which will then update the geometry, bring it back into SimLab, remesh it, reassign all of those, and rerun it for you. Uh, and then you can see the results we can get out of that very nicely. Uh, and this can be done for things like mesh convergence studies as well. Uh, all we'd need to do once we've run the DOV is just update the values uh, and regenerate the model. Right, so. so in this example, you can see the number and the, the spacing of those ribs has changed. Uh, but that should give you a good, good overview of uh, where SimLab can go. And obviously, within the other SimLab uh, presentations, we'll look into this in more detail. Perfect. So that's the, uh, the live study. Let's just have a look at how BMW have implemented some of these uh, techniques. Uh, so BMW's main issue was that uh, firstly, they were outsourcing their crankshaft uh, and it was taking between one to two weeks to, to actually model this. Um, and because they're outsourcing it as well, they would have to assign a budget to this. Um, and due to any kind of geometry changes, uh, which you've kind of highlighted as an important issue, uh, they would quickly need more runs than they budgeted and, and run behind schedule and, and over cost. Uh, so BMW chose SimLab uh, to have a look at how we could improve this uh, with the end goal really of getting more flexibility, more speed, more more consistency within their crankshaft modeling. So if we take a look at their existing process, uh, the models were built manually in ANSA uh, and the time was one week or, or over depending on the actual crankshaft type. Uh, it was outsourced or outsourced uh, and it required advanced planning uh, before the product was even uh, conceived. So within SimLab, we were able to uh, reduce the number of processes, reduce the overall time as well to, to within two hours. Uh, and here's an example of, of the tools they were actually using. So BMW had quite a few specific uh, requirements and these are things which we can easily accommodate due to the the range of mesh controls we have in SimLab. Uh, so one of them they are particularly interested in fillets. Uh, they wanted a nice mapped mesh um, and they wanted very specific sizes in those regions. Uh, they had other requirements as well such as creating RBEs uh, at all of the uh, points shown on the screen uh, and again this could be automated as well within SimLab. So the general process uh, was an import of the CAD model uh, and assigning of the groups. So when they imported uh, the parameter file, it contains all of the groups, much like how we created one for the cylinder earlier. Uh, these would automatically be imported in and then can be assigned uh, either manually or automatically. But then they create a various of mesh 
various meshes uh, based on the mesh controls. Uh, there's various different uh, other requirements they had as well. So things like breaking the bodies apart at RBEs. And again, this could be done within SimLab uh, as an automatic process. Uh, we could even look to create sets as well based on, based on groups uh, for post-processing. Uh, the work with BMW has also led to uh, um, many improvements in SimLab itself. Uh, so for example, the, the layer mesh uh, can now be done in hexes as well. So we can create a layered uh, mesh from the surface in hexahedral elements, uh, which was exactly what BMW were after for, for post-processing. Uh, again, we can transfer uh, groups very easily from, from groups assigned to CAD straight onto groups assigned to meshes, uh, and then again use this as part of the automation. Uh, so here's a uh, quick overview of their process. So the first one was just to rename uh, the body to a more generic name, and this allows all of the scripts then to just pick up that generic name uh, and apply all of the all of their controls straight to that. So BMW opted for, for a semi-automated process uh, in which they run everything in steps. Uh, so the first one was the generation of groups, and these were reading the parameters that were just imported, uh, but they were also open to, to user, um, user updating. Uh, so they wanted the semi-automated process. Uh, but one of the things we can do in SimLab is we can uh, use colors to define faces uh, and then we can automatically pick up those colors as well. Uh, so it doesn't have to be semi-automated, but you have that flexibility. So once you have your groups, uh, it's very easy then to just use these groups to create things like mesh controls, to create loading on those regions, um, anything you need for post-processing as well. Uh, so in this case, we're looking at uh, the actual mesh generated uh, and you can see all of the, the detail in the filament fillets that BMW were interested in and of course the semi-automated process allowed them to to update the model as well and select different regions. SimLab can support many different models so we can have different mesh iterations of the same part uh, maybe if you're looking at different types of analysis, that could be very useful. Uh, then they wanted to create the layered elements that we looked at. So in all of those filleted regions, they wanted a specific number of layers of, of hex or elements um, in order to capture the detail thereafter and for use in post-processing. Uh, so here you can see the, the two layers uh, very nicely. Uh, and then from there, we can create the loads and the boundary conditions. And again, these can be based on all of the groups that we've created up until this process. Uh, so they're all created automatically. Uh, then it'd just be a matter of assigning the properties uh, and you can see all of the sets as well that were created. I guess the key benefits, uh, which we'll look into now, uh, is all about the the speed up in the modeling time really. Um, obviously it allowed them to then bring it in-house, uh, improve the flexibility. Uh, through the use of SimLab as well, we're generating consistent mesh meshes uh, and it's very adaptable to different iterations so we can just run through exactly the same process on different variations of the CAD. Cool. Perfect, so I'll now uh, hand you back to Pete, who should have another audience poll. All right, thank you, Martin. So yeah, the final final poll before we uh, move on to the Q and A session. So again, it should launch on your page uh, on your screens now. So a simple one, really. Uh, would you, from what you've seen today, would you be interested in being contacted by Altair so you can try SimLab out for yourself? Uh, so a few, just three options, yes please, uh, perhaps no, it doesn't look like for you at the moment, or, or option three there, you're perhaps already using SimLab or you're in discussion about using it. So we'll give uh, give the audience a little bit of time to answer answer that one. 
Uh, if you've already answered it, remember we've got a Q&A session coming up now, so feel free to, uh, to type a question in that questions panel while we uh, wait for the last few people to uh, tick a box on that, on that, um, on that poll question. Okay, all right. All right, so yeah, a few of you asking questions, which is great. Um, keep, them, keep them coming. All right, so what we're going to do now is we'll close that, uh, that poll question down and we'll move on to, uh, we'll move on to the Q&A. All right, so uh, just, one, um, just one quick note is that um is that the webinar today is the first of a three-part series so uh today we talked about a lot of the efficiency and productivity gains from simlab uh, the next session uh is entitled unifying c modeling nonlinear multi-physics analysis uh, in simlab that's coming up on the 25th of march so uh late on this month and it's it's uh, designed that session designed specifically for SMBs or small to medium businesses. Um, so if you're from a small to medium business, then then definitely check that one out because that one's really built for you. Um, but if you're a larger organisation, you want to continue to see what SimLab can do, then you're more than welcome to attend that session as well. Uh, and then once that session is done, we'll have one final session on SimLab, which is going to be towards the end of April and there we're going to be looking at the automation functionality within uh, within Simlab. Okay, so with that we can we can move on to the uh, the Q&A session. All right, so a few few questions here for you Martin, so I'll I'll read them and if you can answer them that would be fantastic. Perfect. Um so let's see. Uh, uh, uh. So is there any geometry associated with imported CAD from Creo, for example? Uh, yes, yes. So much like the, the little example, I don't know if you saw, was a, was a SOLIDWORKS assembly. Uh, but similarly, we can do that with the likes of Creo, uh, CATIA, UGNX. Um, yeah, those, those as well. All right, thank you. Uh, so could SimLab create a hexa element only mesh? for BMW crankshaft? Um, so SimLab's main focus is on uh, tetrahedral meshing. Uh, so we can create hexa meshes for, for simple parts, uh, but obviously a crankshaft is quite complex. Uh, we do obviously have another tool in our range, a hypermesh, uh, which is a uh, industry leading preprocessor in, in various different fields. Uh, and one of the the advantages of, of that is its uh, hex meshing ability. Uh, so I would probably recommend if you're looking for a complete hex mesh model uh, to look at hyper mesh instead. Okay. Uh, so perhaps something we'll we'll cover in more detail in the the automation automation session uh, in April. But a question here: How easy is it to develop the script for automatic meshing? Uh, well, I would obviously say uh, very easy. Um, but yeah, one of the one of the features in SimLab is we can actually uh, record a script, so we can uh, do some actions in SimLab and tell SimLab to just record what we're doing, uh, and then it will automatically create a script based on that. Um, and because we can do things like import the groups based on colors, um, we can create our scripts for very generic things. Um, so yeah, it, it is uh, very simple to do. Okay. Uh, so someone in the audience here asking about the difference between SimLab and SimSolid. Um, so is it possible to give a little bit of a little bit of information there about the difference between those two uh, solutions and what they should be used for? Yeah, yeah. So uh, SimLab is obviously what we're looking at today, and this is about building uh, finite element models quickly and efficiently, um, particularly for solid components uh, and looking at multi-physics of those solid components. Or, or just speeding up the overall process to build those models. 
Uh, SimSolid, on the other hand, is a, a relatively new technology. Uh, it's based on an extension of the generalized finite element method. Uh, what it essentially means is you don't have a mesh at all. Uh, we have abstract concepts such as point clouds. Um, there's white papers explaining its functionality. Uh, but I guess the key, the key difference of why you might use which component. Uh, SimLab has some more advanced uh, features for nonlinear, so it can model things such as snap fitting, drop testing. Uh, it can also do CFD, um, which obviously is out of the the range of SimSolid. Uh, but SimSolid is a very good designer tool. Uh, so early in the process, <coughs> just to get a quick, uh, quick look at your model. Uh, but again, it's probably not for final validation. Uh, for the final validation, you'd probably be building your model in SimLab. Thanks, Martin. Uh, so a question here about some of the solvers that are supported. So um, someone's saying here that they saw Abacus in the solver list. Uh, can you give a little bit of info about what solvers are supported in SimLab? Yeah, yeah. So we can build uh, models for a range of solvers. So obviously, um, we still BMW using Abacus, so we can build models for Abacus. Uh, we can also build models for, for ANSYS um, and various different uh, um, products, solvers for not just structural. Um, but when we look at the solution panel, which we are in, uh, this is our more sort of streamlined uh, model build, model setup uh, that we can use instead. Um, so yeah, a wide range of supported, uh, but certainly our solvers are implemented a bit more seamlessly, uh, but that's not to say that you can't use any solver. All right, fantastic. So uh, fast approaching the hour here, so maybe just time for a couple more um, before we finish. One quick question which I can answer, so was the presentation recorded uh, so it can be shared with others? Yes, it was, and we will be sending that out. You'll, you should get an email coming to your inboxes tomorrow with a link so you can uh, watch the recording or send it to others in your company. Um, question here, can SimLab do mid-surface extraction and shell meshing? Uh, yes, it can. All right, <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> um, in terms of multi-physics, would it be possible to carry out uh, fluid structure interaction analysis? Yep, yep, absolutely. Um, so as, as Pete mentioned, this will be shared. And, and one of the example with videos was the fluid structure interaction. Uh, so we can look at yeah running a CFD analysis, uh, then mapping the pressure and the temperature we get from that straight onto a structure analysis. Uh, and it's just a matter of right clicking and, and mapping from those other load cases. Okay, okay great. So perhaps time for one final question, uh, which is um, related to hypermesh. So does Hypermesh have any advantages over SimLab? So uh, where do you see those other two products fitting together? Yeah, uh, so for for anything solid uh, modeling that you're happy to model in tetrahedrals, uh, I'd probably be looking at SimLab uh, just because it's a lot easier to automate. Uh, it's a lot easier to get consistently high quality meshes out of. Um, there are some advantages or some reasons at least why you would use hypermesh. Uh, so one of them we've kind of touched on is hexahedral meshing. Uh, what we mentioned earlier with the mid-surfacing, uh, SimLab can do simple mid-surfacing, but hypermesh has uh, a lot more capabilities uh, for the mid-surfacing as well. Uh, it also has a, a lot better handling of composites, so composite laminate structures and that kind of thing. Uh, and it, again, can have some slightly more advanced uh, simulations, but not, I would say, more for, for niche applications. So SimLabs uh, got all of the all of the solution capability for most things uh, that you'd be looking at, uh, but for certain niche applications, Hypermesh may be better. Uh, but you can always reach out to us, and we'll be able to advise on the best the best tool to suit your needs. Okay, and uh, one last one to just. Uh snuck on the bottom of this there while while you were talking. So is there is it possible to develop FSI or just one direction? Uh, so in terms of mapping a, a structural load onto fluid, um, I would have to check. Uh, I think it's in the development for the next release. All right, fantastic. Uh, so thank you, Martin, uh, and thanks to Bal, who spoke earlier.
um, and thanks to everyone who attended the call today. So we're going to close the call now. Uh, as mentioned a moment ago, the session was recorded, so we will be sending out a link so you can watch it again. And uh, we'll also be sending you details of that next webinar in, in this three-part series. Uh, and obviously following up with anyone who requested to be uh, contacted today. So thanks again, everyone. And uh, I'll close the call now um, and speak to you again very soon. Thank you.